This program is about a program about unsolved mysteries. Whenever possible, the host woke up and filmed parts of the video. What you are about to see is not a news broadcast, not sure why you'd mistake it for one. Tonight, on Unsolved Mysteries. Inconsistent YouTuber, terrible writer, government test subject, and young Sheldon fanzine creator. All words to describe this man. When he mysteriously disappeared from a Denny's, people searched for hour to find him with no success. Now, we believe he may have been at home this whole time, simply ignoring calls and messages. This isn't really a mystery, so here's the other things. A Pennsylvania man seems to have two identities. Neighbor Steve Rodriguez says he was sitting on his front porch when he saw sparks. Uh, all the flames are coming out from the window. Could it be a case of amnesia or simply a case of continued racial indifference? Then. The brutal slaughter of several students at a temple sent shockwaves through the Coruscant community. Now, police need your help identifying this man. I hate them! This guy thinks Bigfoot is real, and he ate his ass. Yeah, Bigfoot's real. He ate my ass. It was it? It was alright. And finally, this man is interested in being in the video, but he works late shift and is usually busy. Is that a mystery? Join me, and you may be able to... Binge every episode of the show that came out in the 80s. Let's do something a little different today. I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite things. Unsolved mysteries. Yeah, that's right. Come on, get in here, Robert Stack, you terrifying robot. <laughs> I love unsolved mystery stuff. I don't know why. I guess it's that morbid fascination with the unknown. We know so much about the world that those things that we still can't figure out can be so creepy. It also lets you be a little detective and you quickly realize that every incarnation of Sherlock Holmes is bullshit. What's that? You solved the mystery because of a little bit of dirt on the victim's shoe? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and see some more evidence on that, Sherlock, because this guy was found dead with the woman's number on him, and when they went to the woman, they showed her a cast of what the man looked like, and she fainted, and we still don't know who that guy was. Disclaimer. The Summerton man was not found with the woman's number on him. It was a piece of the Rubaiyat which was later matched to a copy that had the woman's number in it. I know this, but I wasn't going to explain all that. And then I did it anyway. Shit. There's some great unsolved content out there. There's uh, BuzzFeed Unsolved and... You know, I'm sure there are others. Look at the way I dance on it. I disrespect your bridge, goat man. They're gonna put my name in graffiti. Oh my god. Okay. Children will come here and tell tales of me. But out of all the options out there, they don't hit quite the way the OG Unsolved Mysteries does. The show was created by John Cosgrove and Terry Dunmuir and has been going since 1987. I mean, if you want to get technical, it went from 1987 to 1999, and then from 2000 to 2002, and then from 2007 to 2010, and then from 2020 to now. Over that time, it's been hosted by Virginia Madison, Dennis Farina, no one, and the real hero of the program. <laughs> This man was the scariest motherfucker to ever exist. Even when he's smiling, it feels like he contains secret knowledge that could destroy you with a single word. Ooh boy, I would not want to cross this man. Even now, I'm afraid he's gonna come back from the grave and kick the shit out of me. This man was an old school actor. My one hope is to build this man up and give him all the confidence I can. Stryker, you ever flown a motor engine plane before? No, never. Shit. Oh, I miss you, Zucker Brothers. I mean, you're still around, but... Uh... He really was the perfect host for this because his stern vibe really highlights the horrific nature of the things he's talking about. Chupa Cabras. Then sometimes he's a bit warmer and it's comforting in a good cop, bad cop kind of way. Yes, Robert, I'll, I'll tell you everything I know. Just please don't send Robert back in here. <laughs> ah! And then sometimes the lead from Candyman co-host for six episodes before the show gets canceled. The show's importance can't be overstated. They haven't just put this out there, they've used their resources to actually solve some of the things they've covered. They've also gone back over the years and updated the episodes to be in line with the most current information. They're clearly focused on actually working to accomplish something. That's cool. You can tell because they put all the episodes on YouTube for free. You may be asking yourself how I'm gonna wring content out of something I actually hold in very high regard and respect the intent of. Well, if I just told you that bit of info, I wouldn't really be fully demonstrating what Unsolved Mysteries is. I look through the window. Uh, that's when I saw the Spanish monk. Like any content in this genre, they aren't all about crime. Sometimes they cover things that are only unsolved because you can't technically say the Loch Ness Monster isn't real. Chupa covers. However, this is formatted differently than most shows like this. When BuzzFeed Unsolved does this stuff, it's a separate show under the banner. There's the true crime and then the supernatural seasons, but they're separated. Unsolved Mysteries has to fill 45 minutes every time they come on, so they cover multiple stories. This means you get plenty of episodes that are half this. I had nothing to do 
with Lita's death. However, Lita's mother said this. I really would like to see Jim go to the electric chair. And half this. In recent years, hundreds of credible ordinary people have come forward with alarming reports of being taken aboard alien spacecraft against their will. Chupa covers. The juxtaposition is insane. It's even more jarring in the opening rundown. Bill and Dorothy Wacker claim they have been targeted in a vicious campaign of harassment. Anonymous phone calls, threatening notes, burglaries, and even violent assaults. In this most bizarre case, everyone is suspect, even the Whackers themselves. Many people believe that the untamed forests of the Pacific Northwest harbor a mysterious creature known as Bigfoot. I wanted to talk about this show for a while. It's just so fascinating. There are episodes of this that I had to turn off or fast forward because something made me too uncomfortable, and then just a few seconds later, I'm laughing my ass off because the reenactment actors are all aliens. I gotta get back to the fish. <laughs> I'm going to take a look at an episode of the OG Unsolved Mysteries and talk about it. Since this show has a tendency to switch between goofy and horrific quite fast, I'm going to be skipping over anything too gruesome. If you're into this unsolved content, go check this show out. Maybe you'll see your neighbor on there and realize he eats human beings. I've randomly chosen episode one of season four. Let's get stacked. That sounds highly inappropriate. Forget I said that. I, I, I never said that. This man claims he never said that, but some say he did. That they're liars. Case closed. We gotta start off by talking about one of the best things to ever exist. The Unsolved Mysteries title theme. If that doesn't get you amped to see a man hit an old lady in the head with a bowling ball, I don't know what will. I put in a clip from the episode I'm referencing, but despite being totally safe to show on TV, it makes me want to curl up into a ball and shudder. The intro visuals themselves are fine. They've changed it up over the years, but it's always the same basic theme. Words flying at your face. They've also added title cards saying solved. It's rarely in the same font and the music does a little flourish that makes it seem like it was added to sound less creepy and more hopeful. Welcome to Unsolved Mysteries, where we solve the mysteries. I actually really like this, because I could be wrong, but I don't believe they add this to episodes where they haven't actually solved things. So you know that when you see this, one or more of these things will actually have a resolution, but you don't know which one. It's a pretty good way to keep people watching. It can draw in the people who need the finality of catching the culprit. Since these are all real things that happen, er, well, mostly real things that happen. Chupa covers. It feels nice to know that the bad people got caught. Also, all the intros are a bit tainted because they all remind me of... On the mark, get set. We're riding on the internet. Cyberspace, cybersex. Let's see what we're getting into on this episode. Hopefully nothing too crazy. For the first time, former Air Force personnel go on camera to tell of a close encounter of what they believe were UFOs. Well, I'm sure that's the weirdest thing, though. Shane Stewart and Sally McNally of San Angelo, Texas, were typical teenagers until they became involved with a bizarre underground cult. After her father passed away, Carla would discover a surprising secret hidden in her tangled family history. The woman she knew as her mother was not her mother after all. What the fuck? I'm serious. I chose this episode at random. That's what it's like with this show. It's like a roulette wheel programmed by the devil. The first story is about a UFO sighting in a place called Rendlesham. Can you guess where that is? Oh, I look up in the sky. It's a bloody alien. My sincerest apologies to any of my viewers in the UK or also maybe Australia or New Zealand. I I'm never quite sure where the accents are coming from, but they're never right. These are normally the type of segments that make me tune out, but this one had just enough interesting stuff about it to keep me reeled in. Sadly, we don't hear a lot of accents in this bit. We get a lot of exposition from this man with a face that seems to get tinier as the episode goes on. It's a story about some soldiers from a base going to the woods and finding... It had a bank of blue lights on it, and it was sitting there like strobing. Oh no, they're back. Nobody to listen. We all hit the ground. And then the uh, special effects budget ran out. You know, they really weren't starting with much. It was happening. Everything seemed to go slower. We seemed to be in like a, I wouldn't say a time more, but like everything appeared to be happening slower to us. And everything felt different. But when it was all, when it disappeared, it was like everything was normal again. The perception of the ground, the, um, the air, the sky, the stars, the whole nine yards were different. I have a prevailing theory that this man was never a soldier and he just went to Rendlesham to get very high. For more than two hours, the three men played an eerie game of cat and mouse with a mysterious craft. 
it appeared almost to toy with them. The craft also had the strange ability to turn day into night. Then, like it's the Twilight Zone, Robert Stack appears to guide us through this story. Sadly, they didn't let him stray too far from the hangar that they used to house him in. You can even see his handlers in the background. Don't go too far, Robert. Your power is too great for the world. Sometimes Robert showing up is comforting, and then other times it seems like he's somebody who commits all these crimes and then does this show to brag about never getting caught. To this day, police have found no signs of a struggle, no evidence of foul play, and no body. Their only clue is a mysterious man who came to Leonard's house. Authorities believe he is <laughs> That is the grin of a man who knows he is untouchable. Dear old Robert explains that these guys went back into the woods, but this time they brought Cole Phelps. Oh, it's so clear now. I know who's been the alien all along. They was working on the tires. That's all that was took. They try to observe the area, but everything malfunctions, and this guy explains the situation like he's trying to call out of work. I don't know, sir. Craziest damn things I've ever seen. Animals in the forest are acting weird. Starlight scope's going bad, and radios ain't working, and light alls ain't coming up. Let's get out there and see what we got. All right, sir. Yeah, sorry, can't come in today. Damn light alls ain't working. Yeah, yeah, I know I work in a bakery, and this has no relevance to the situation. After the commercial break, Robert has broken free of his confines and is now in the woods. No one can stop his thirst for the unknown. What you are about to see is based on verbatim transcripts of the tape made that night. I just think that since this is a verbatim transcript, it would be very funny if these guys just kept making up things that got thrown into this reenactment. Like, oh yeah, Johnson, he went over and he talked to the alien. The alien was big and scary, but Private Johnson wasn't scared because his dick was just so big. Sadly, nothing like that happens. These soldiers just wander around the woods and then they get visited by the movie Suspiria. The farmhouse appeared to be glowing very brightly as though it were on fire. I reckon there's somebody in there, sir. I don't know the time. Why would he know that? He has the same amount of awareness of this situation as you do. And this is verbatim too, so you know that means that somebody was like, and then Charlie asked just like a really fucking dumb question. The object then broke into five white objects and disappeared. Oh great, it's that ghost from Animal Crossing. Always gets scared and splits into pieces, even if he sees you approaching from the other side of the island, and then you gotta go round him up, and then what, he, he gives you a couch? Oh, thanks so much. You know what, get your own damn soul pieces. I'm just here to get enough stars to build a robot. Um, I have gotten a little bit more heated than I should have for that, so let's, uh, you know. <laughs> And then the alien ships start doing patterns, and this guy theorizes that maybe they were searching for something, like possibly his stylish threads. Well, if you need stylish threads, look no further than Mac Weldon. They've declined to sponsor this episode, but... The rest of this is basic UFO stuff. People talking about lights and things flying toward them, and ooh, the only time the light alls worked was when that thing passed by us. Joke's on you, that wasn't an alien, that was Bob from Twin Peaks, traveling through electricity or whatever the fuck David Lynch was getting at. I'm so depressed, I don't know what I'm doing. The UFO did a little searchlight thing and then flew away, and then the British covered it up because they didn't want anybody to know that the royal family is a bunch of aliens. They bring in this teddy bear of a man, and he says that there was a meteor shower that night, and then this guy in tiny face say the exact same thing. The meteor's go not going to go up. And then this guy very reasonably says that everyone went out there expecting to see something and probably saw a lighthouse? Hey, if there wasn't an outline of a naked Willem Dafoe in there, that wasn't a lighthouse. See, these segments are interesting to me because I don't really know how I feel about aliens and UFOs. Like, I believe that we can't be the only life out there in the galaxy, but I don't necessarily know that they've ever come here to visit us. Other than the royal family, of course. Mr. Stack and these soldier guys sure don't have the answers either. I've had people suggest all sorts of things, everything from I've seen the second coming of Christ to the devil's after us. I, I, I don't know if that's it. I think we could rule that one out. Oh yeah, you know, the devil showed up. He didn't, he didn't really do anything, though. He just kind of flew around for a bit and exploded. Devil's fucking lame, bro. Wasn't that fun? Didn't you have fun? Talking about aliens in the woods was so fun, right? Yeah, that was fun. Anyway, now let's talk about some teenagers who were murdered by a cult. I'm not really gonna talk about this one too much, because this is meant to be a mostly humorous video, and uh, yeah, there's not really anything funny about this one. It's just kind of one of the sad ones. I mean, what am I even gonna say? Oh, look, you can see the boom guy in the reflection. That's so funny. Why didn't they think of that when they were shooting this reenactment of a man finding his son's bones? Long story short, some people think these guys got involved in a cult and then unfortunately lost their lives. And she said that a group of kids had been at her house one night and said they had a demon in a bottle. Maybe they were just big comic fans. Everybody loves the arc about Tony Stark's alcoholism. This ultimately leads to one of the only things I can make fun of in this episode. This reenactment. 
in the name of our Father, the great Satan. We humbly bow to you now. I'm just excited to see my Lord and Savior Baphomet represented in such glorious Italian stone. I do hope his eyes gaze upon me and that my allegiance is recognized. I don't know. Satan's pretty cool. So the girl introduces the boy to Satan, and then they try to get away from Mr. Satan, and then some people yelled at them in a truck, and boom, Howard saw it. I listened a little bit more, and they continued to argue in the first, and then I got to thinking, well, there's just a bunch of kids out there drinking, partying. I know this is a very serious story, but I, I had to rewind that part so many times because I just could not stop laughing. I turned my boat around and I left. Man, that's so funny. It really lightens up this story about teenagers who were murdered with shotguns and then they never found the people who did it. That was fun. You had fun, right? That's the real volleying act of the show. Start with Bigfoot might be real, right? And then move on to here's a grisly homicide. And then after they get all the interesting stuff out of the way, they always go to a story about somebody who's looking for somebody. Like, you know, they've never met or they met once and then they lost contact. And, and I'm sorry, these ones are just so boring. They're always the same thing. These people lost contact, and we put them on TV, so they found contact again, and now you can look at them, go through photo albums, and talk about all the things they're definitely gonna do with each other now that they're back together. That's the best part of any of these, because it always seems like the people are like, oh, this was so much effort, I'm, I'm never visiting this person again. This one is a bit more interesting than those typical cases. This woman was raised by some people, and always felt different from her brother. And then she found out that her brother wasn't actually her brother at all, and boy, her brother can act. I noticed something peculiar on my birth certificate a couple of years ago, and I looked at it again last night, and it states the number of children born to mom before me, if any, and it lists this figure as none. Unsolved Mysteries often got the people who were actually involved in the incident to be in the reenactments. You know, provided they weren't murdered with a 2 by 4 or something like that. So I don't know if this guy is an actor or her actual brother, but man, let me just tell you, somebody's got to get him an Emmy for his performance here. I don't care how many years later it is, just put him in the current Emmys, no one's watching him anyway. Now I have a father who wasn't my father, a brother who isn't my brother, and I'm not real sure about my mother. Bars. A brother who isn't my brother and not real sure about my mother. A brother who isn't my brother and not real sure about my mother. Anyway, her birth mother wasn't actually her birth mother and her fake mother raised her because her birth mother couldn't. And then her uncle says this. I almost had a sense that someday it was going to come out. Yeah, you think? That's literally how fantasy movies start. Or that one Pearl Jam song, I'm pretty sure. What you thought was your daddy was nothing. Then, turns out her birth mother was watching and they meet up and go through photo albums. God damn it! Uh, that's the end of the episode. The teaser for the next one says it's about John Wilkes Booth and how some people think he wasn't assassinated and Robert Stack has this creepy expression like he's the one who killed the man. While researching this story, we were surprised to discover that even the Encyclopedia Britannica is not sure of what happened to John Wilkes Booth. Somebody get that man back in the hangar. I, I think he's been out for a little too long. Let's just shove him back in there. So that's your typical Unsolved Mysteries episode. Equal parts sad, sappy, horrifying, and unintentionally funny. It's certainly an odd show, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't watch a lot of it. You know, some segments are a little too gruesome, and those are the ones I don't really like returning to, but I think this show, on the whole, was a net positive. I think it drew a lot of attention to things that weren't being covered otherwise, and I think it ultimately did some good, because some of these things did get resolved. And we could argue about how much the show had to do with that, and how much of it was, you know, people just looking into it and finding new information because even when they go to these stories in the show it's typically like oh yeah eventually this person just confessed or eventually just new evidence came up and it wasn't so much about what the show did but the fact that they covered it and you know people are at least aware of this i think that's a good thing i don't know i i kind of went off script a little bit ago and i'm just sort of rambling now chupa covers so if you're into this kind of content, I'd say you should check it out. Like I said, free on YouTube, and they also released an updated version of the show on Netflix. That one's a bit different. Maybe I'll talk about that one day. You know, I watched a lot of it while I was recovering from my surgery, and it's, it's interesting. It's a lot more, um, depressing. And if there's another episode of this version of the show that you'd like me to take a look at, well, let me know in the comments down below, because I would love to take a look at more of these. Also, I kind of already did that. Me and Steve talked about the Chupacabra episode, so that's going to go up on the Pitch Shift channel, or... This 
channel or uh, that that will go up on a channel. I don't know. I don't I don't know what I'm doing anymore. It's been a wild year, guys. My creativity and drive to do things has seen such peaks and valleys, so making this video really got me out of one of the lower places, and I'm glad I did it. You know, I've been wanting to work on this video for a while now, and I'm glad it turned out like this. This was a lot of fun to make, and I'm curious to know what you guys think of it. I know it's been a tough time for a lot of people for very obvious reasons, but I hope that wherever you are right now, you're doing your best and you're carrying on the best you can. And hey, thanks so much for checking this out. Uh, did you like it? If you liked it, you should leave a like on it down below. And those comments down there, they don't have to be for just this. Yeah, if there's a movie you'd like me to check out or just something you'd like me to talk about, uh, leave it down there below. You know, I always love getting feedback and comments from you guys. Really makes my day. Definitely working on more movie videos. You know, I'm just juggling a lot right now. I sent my book off to... Uh, be proofread. Um, finally finishing up Frozen Run. It's going to be out very soon. But if you want to be along for that ride, and hey, if you even want to help me make some of that stuff, well, subscribe and head on over to my Patreon, where you can get all kinds of cool rewards, like your name on this end screen here. I actually have a tier where you can have your name read out at the end of these videos. And uh, yeah, so that's why I'm reading out Liam Polinsky's name. Hi, Liam. Um, and I don't really know if you wanted me to like uh, guide people to your channel or something like that or how you wanted this to go, but I, I didn't really think this out, so thank you for forcing me to figure this out. For those of you who don't know, me and Liam went to uh, high school together, and uh, he's, he's a very skilled musician, and he's an overall cool guy. Uh, Liam, I don't know what you're doing right now, if you're doing anything creatively inclined or just sort of going through life, but I wish you all the best. Thank you so much for watching this. Let me know if you want to see more, and I will see you in the next video. I'm <laughs>